Hello, Loveland Magazine. Cassie, the food guru, is here at Tahona in Loveland. What is Tahona? Well, you're about to find out because I'm standing here with Scott, one of the owners. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Awesome. Great, great to be here. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you for having us. Now, what I want to start with, Scott, why Tahona? What is it? What is, what is the origin behind the name and why Loveland, Ohio? Sure. Uh, well, we opened our first Tahona location in 2017 in Summit Park in Blue Ash. Okay. Um, so Tahona is actually a two-ton volcanic rock wheel that is used in a pit, uh -huh. which is why we have the curved shape right. is to resemble the pit. Uh, Makes sense. And all of our granite is done in a black granite that looks like a volcanic rock. And uh, the Tahona wheel is used for milling um, and horses or donkeys would traditionally be used to pull the wheel around the pit and it would crush the baked agave, oh, okay. extracting the agave nectar, which then gets fermented, distilled and turned into tequila. So it's a 600 year old process of handcrafting tequila and we have handcrafted tacos, so right. that's why we called it Tahona. So Beautiful. Tahona is a, uh, a, a taqueria and tequila bar. Mm -hmm. We focus on street tacos. Okay. Um, our, all of our food was inspired by Mexican street food. It is not authentic Mexican street food. It's inspired by it. So we use all hormone-free, antibiotic-free meats. Amen. We have gluten-free. Everything on our menu can be made gluten-free. Um, so we've kind of kicked it up a notch right, um, right and then all of our tacos have a different flavor profile based on the protein that or the uh, the main item if it's a vegetarian taco or if it's a meat taco each uh, taco has toppings that are specific to making that flavor profile the best it can be okay so one of the things that really caught my attention uh when i was researching tohona is you use all your own recipes is that correct correct and not only that, you make them all fresh in your kitchen. Correct. Right? So many places, microwave, you know, getting frozen food, all of that kind of stuff. Also, your cocktails, freshly made juice, freshly made syrups. I saw that there was a house made ginger syrup. So, touch a little bit on, you know, why you decided that, hey, we're going to make it all from scratch, we're going to make it in house, our own recipes. Well, that, that is uh, a, a culinary. Uh, choice that we've made as a company. Right. All of our restaurants, regardless of concept, are all fresh, yes. scratch made, everything. Um, we don't have a freezer in this restaurant. Love that. Um, we don't have, um, you know, there is no microwave physically in the building. Um, so nice. we cannot, uh, we, we can't make it any fresher than we do. So all of our picos, all of our salsas, we have four fresh salsas that we make every day. Um, all of our picos, we have four different picos that we make fresh every day. So all the ingredients, toppings, everything that we do, even our shredded lettuce, we don't buy bagged shredded lettuce, we shred it by hand. So, oh, um, so everything is done the freshest we possibly can. And obviously if we're doing that with the food, we want the drinks to, to follow suit as well. Right. So all of our, our house margarita, it's all it's fresh squeezed lime, lemon, and orange juice organic agave nectar, right. and then El Himidor silver tequila. So it is a, as fresh and as quality of a margarita as you can get. And, uh, right. and we offer that both in a uh, rocks or in a frozen format, right. um, which was fun to do when we got the frozen margarita machines. The salesperson was like, I've never had anybody put fresh juices in here. Oh man. <laughs> Let's see if this works. <laughs> right, right. So it took us a it took us a few tries to right. get it, but we figured out how to make a great quality frozen margarita in the machine. So we actually have margarita flights. We have eight different flavors of margaritas and uh, you can order, you know, your choice of any three rocks or frozen. Right. Um, so and then why is my our, mouth watering right now? Yeah, oh my gosh. I, I'm getting thirsty too, so uh, I, I really need a margarita may, right now. May have really. to, I know, may have <laughs> to head out. over to Blue Ash. <laughs> right. um, now, um, one of the things I did see, and I don't know if you can really touch on it because it, it might be a secret. Um, so with the Tahona margarita, your time-honored Tahona technique, what exactly does that mean? Well, the, the 
tequila that we use in our Tahona Margarita uh -huh is a 100% Tohono process tequila. Gotcha. So it okay. is done by that handcrafted artisanal way. Gotcha. So if you look at tequila bottles, if you're trying to choose a tequila for your party this weekend, uh, if or you tonight. see, or, or tonight, <laughs> uh, if you see Tohono process on the label, then right. you know it's gonna be more expensive okay. because it was handmade, handcrafted. It's fermented differently. The, the whole process is, is very different than the mechanized process that most tequila manufacturers use today. Gotcha. I was so interested in that. I'm like, what's the secret? I'm, I'm very curious yeah. about that. Now, so just to give you an example, the, the house margarita, mm -hmm. the tequila in that is a mechanized El Jimador tequila, and it Ooh. is about $16 a bottle. In our Tahona, our signature margarita, yes. it's $72 a bottle. Wow. So significantly high quality though. Correct. Yeah. Very much. So, so. both are high quality, but just your different your ends of the apples spectrum. and oranges. Right, right. Right. Now, Scott, um, like you were talking about a little uh, earlier, Looking Glass Hospitality, mm -hmm. um, that is the group um, that has several restaurants. Now, a lot of good ones. I looked at them. Um, let's hit on those a little bit. Um, so sure. name your restaurants and kind of talk about those concepts a little bit and, um, you know, why you decided to add another one on and just really curious about how Looking Glass Hospitality came to, you know, origin. Sure. Um, well, we, we've always wanted to do a restaurant in downtown Loveland. Right. We love the area, the traffic, you know, everything that downtown Absolutely. Loveland has to offer. We, we've been we've looked at multiple sites in the area and uh, when I was approached with this particular location um, we were we were pretty excited about what we could do with the space right. um, the decision to make a Tahona actually came later we weren't we were going to do a different concept because our company has created we have five current concepts this right. will be our sixth restaurant so it's Excellent. the first duplication of a concept that we've done okay. So Tahona and Blue Ash was our first restaurant. Clybourne's, so it's SW Clybourne Company Provision and Spirits, which is up in Mason, Mason which is an okay. urban gastropub out in the suburbs. Oh, beautiful. Um, so that was our second restaurant. We okay. opened that in 2018. Then we opened Fretboard uh, Brewing and Public House out in Hamilton. We partnered up with our friends at Fretboard Brewing and we opened a public house and a brewery out in Hamilton, Ohio. Okay. So that was our third one. That opened in December of 19. Okay. And then we uh, ended up uh, taking over Toast and Berry in Montgomery. So good. And we uh, converted that to a looking glass hospitality concept, redid the menu, the kitchen, um, and redid all that. Um, so we took that over in January of 2020, right before COVID hit. Okay. Um, and then we were supposed to open uh, Emery, our uh, seafood leaning concept that's in the square in Marymount. Okay. That was supposed to open in April of 2020, obviously with COVID. We kind of held off. Right. So we finally got that open in December of 2020. Oh, good. Okay. And then this one will be our sixth restaurant. Um, and uh, this will open. You'll hear it first here. July 13th is our grand opening. July 13th. There you go, guys. Get ready. Mexican street style. Now, what I want to know, Scott, what is your background? It, are, were you in the restaurant business? You a business guy? What, what's your story? Uh, I was a bicycle manufacturer. No, I'm kidding. I, I've been in the, the <laughs> restaurant business my whole life. Okay. So 37 years I've worked in restaurants. I've done everything from dishwashing to chef yeah. to uh, COO of a, a national multi-concept company. So Where were you a chef at? I'm just uh, curious. The, if you remember Cooker Bar and Grill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was I was a chef there. Also another restaurant. Um, I opened my first bar and restaurant in Chicago, at the intersection of uh, North Avenue uh -huh. and Clybourne. Okay. Which is why Clybourne is called Clybourne. Yeah. It's a nod to the first one. I opened right. that in 1994. Oh wow. So I owned. A, it was a 23,000 square foot sports bar and restaurant in Chicago. Was it called the ESPN? Nope. It thing? was called what? it was called Joe's. Joe's, Joe's okay. Sports Bar. Still there today. It is still there. I don't own it anymore, but okay. it's still there today. I was wondering because I'm like I've been to a couple, but I was trying to think of the the large, how large it is. Twenty. That's huge. yeah. It was a big place. Wow. Yeah, we had 185 TVs um, it, in it, so it was, and that was back when TVs were not flat panel. Yeah. So oh gosh. Think about that. Yeah. That was exactly. a lot of TVs. Wow. To, that's crazy. Well, so you have obviously an extensive background in the restaurant business, so definitely confident that you're going to get this going and, you know, get our community here. Um, so what I want to switch to now, of course, is the menu. 
because sure. I'm excited. So I kind of picked a couple things from each section that I think the community would like to know about, and honestly, I want to know about. Sure. Um, so appetizers that stood out to me, the Tahona guac, uh, the pineapple mango guac, mango guac, and the shrimp ceviche. So tell us a little bit about any of that. Sure. Uh, our guacamole is all fresh avocado, um, and we dice fresh tomatoes, onions, cilantro, lime, um, and kosher salt, and okay. that's what we make our guacamole with. If you order the uh, the pineapple mango uh -huh. salsa, then we add um, and we dice it fresh every day, fresh mango and fresh pineapple, and we just mix that in with the guacamole okay. in addition to all the other things. So okay, it's just an, an additive, and it basically it, it gives it a sweeter profile. Beautiful. Um, and then the uh, ceviche is just fresh shrimp and, you know, lime juice. Right and cilantro, tomato, onions, right. really good. You know, the reason I brought that up is because I've been to all the restaurants around here a million times. I don't know anybody that has ceviche. So that's very, very interesting to well, me. And that's, that's why we chose Tahona here. Right. Even though that wasn't our original intent, we just kept coming back to it and going, how great would a taco place be? Get off the bike trail, right. have a margarita and some fresh tacos, right. get off the canoe, in your swim trunks, right. come in, feel comfortable sitting out on our patio and uh, enjoying margaritas and tacos right. with the Dora district. How nice to walk around with, with a fresh margarita. So I, would I, like I, that. Yeah. I think it'll, I think it'll, it'll do very well. Now, now that brings me to my other point, the home of the walking taco. Yep. That's perfect for here. I mean, walking taco yeah. right so why why did, did it start with that kind of the home of the walking no. taco or just kind of like a thing that stuck no we we wanted to do something different and when we opened in summit um park a huge park you know 140 right. acre yeah. park and people would we knew people would be coming in getting food and going out into the park absolutely so we we went and made a a custom fry basket that takes two corn tortillas uh -huh. holds them together drop them in the fryer right. it makes a cup so we slide it inside of a cup and then we fill it with two of the street taco fillings so you okay. can get them in traditional which would be the ground beef with the crema sh shredded lettuce and pico or you can do it with any of our tacos and then you just take a fork put it in the top and you break down the the shell as you eat and you just eat it out of the cup so oh, that that's it's not a frito bag with chili in it right it's right actually the tacos and so. that's why i want you to specify that because the walking taco a lot of people think what you just said right you know maybe it's corn chips or whatever but the walking Correct. taco is actually you know what yeah. you had just said now with that um I found a couple really interesting soups and salads. Um, I'm vegan. Everybody knows this on, on Lovely Magazine, of course, but I am. And so that's why I was so interested and drawn to here because you do have vegetable marinated tofu. I saw that you yep. also have tortahongas, yep. which has mushrooms, which is mm -hmm. awesome. But you just this, have to get it no cheese. No cheese, yeah. No but. cheese, no cheese. But um, the mango pineapple salad, that sounds awesome. Yep. So what? So it's just like a salad, mango, pineapple. What all? What all yeah, do you put in there? It has a, a fresh citrus vinaigrette. Okay. Um, as well as the same fresh diced mango and pineapple that right. we talked about going into the guacamole. Okay. It gets tossed in with the salad. Okay. Um, so and then it has red onion, uh, tomato, and uh, the pineapple, and then you can add any proteins. Not that you would, but yes, you could yes. add tofu. Right. right. Um, but you can add any proteins to any of the salads okay. as well. Okay. Now, um, your chicken tortilla soup. Yep. Is that pretty special i'm sure it is it is it, it's very good and and the unique aspect of it is it's gluten-free as well oh man so, well, that is very unique i don't know too many people that I have figured either. out how to make a a traditional chicken tortilla soup gluten-free right so right see another special thing guys yeah. we're just learning and learning now um so with the tacos you can do flour corn or tostado mm -hmm. right um so we so go ahead and go through um what proteins you can get what you guys offer sure uh, we have chicken, shrimp, uh -huh. we have uh, the, old, the carnitas, pork carnitas. Okay. So the way we do our carnitas, it roasts for 16 hours. Oh. Um, so it's very tender. We cook it in, in uh, bacon fat okay. is the way, you know, no other liquid. And that way it stays super tender. Wow. When you cook in water, it tends to pull the moisture out right. of the meat. Um, but it takes 16 hours. So we have slow cookers that are on all night, every night. Oh 
uh, cooking down. Um, we roast whole chickens and pull them down by hand, and then we use the bones from the chickens to make our own chicken stock that we use to make the chicken tortilla oh my soup. Gosh. So, um, and then so pork, chicken, beef. Um, we have a steak, uh, a carne asada uh, taco as well. Okay. Um, we have two different fish tacos. We have a blackened mahi-mahi taco, and then we have a uh, fried uh, haddock taco as well. Um, shrimp, I believe I already said. And uh, so we have eight different tacos. And then we have our vegetarian taco, which is tofu and okay. portobello mushrooms. Okay. So it's a marinated tofu that oh. we marinate for 24 hours. Yes. And then we flash fry it um, so that the flavor seals to the tofu right. and it gives it a little texture right um, as well as mushrooms and then a fresh corn and poblano uh, pico de gallo oh. now um, I was speaking with Kate Gary I'm sure you obviously sure. know Brian Gary she said something about the chicken tanga yep she said she loves that what exactly yeah, is that chicken tanga it's yeah. a traditional chicken tanga onion garlic and then a whole lot of spice Awesome. So, so spicy. It a, uh, yeah, it's a spicy, uh, it's a tomato based sauce, uh, but has a lot of spice. Okay. I was curious because she's like, Cassie, you have to. I'm like, you know, I'm vegan, girl, <laughs> but I'll, I'll recommend it to everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> we could do a tofu tinga probably for Yeah, you. there so you go. That, 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 that we can do. See, already willing to help me out. There we go. We, we, but our, our philosophy is, you know, if we can do it, we will. I love so that. don't be afraid to ask if you come in. Yay, awesome. So um, you also have a kid's menu, and then I saw fresh donut holes. Yes. What's that all about? That sounds yummy. Well, that is a signature dessert in our company. Every restaurant has it. It's okay. a gluten-free ricotta donut hole, Oof. which we can make dairy-free as well. Oh my gosh, um, we I love uh, it. puree tofu and use that as the binder to replace the ricotta. Oh. So, uh, so we do have the ability. So the donut holes that we serve, um, we serve in every one of our restaurants in some okay. iteration or another. I was so. wondering because I was looking at the menu and I'm like, fresh donut holes. I mean, it sounds good, but why? You know, but does that make sense? Instead now? of churros, yeah. or you know, we had sopapillas on our on our original menu in blue ash, and then when our gluten-free donut holes became so popular. Oh, yeah. If we opened a restaurant now without those, I, I think we would we would have anarchy on our hands. But, uh, <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, so, so that is the uh, the reason behind it is we switched from the sopapilla to a uh, fresh donut hole. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, we got to go into uh, the cocktails next because sure. it's important. Um, so a couple that stood out to me, obviously the Tohono because of the house-made ginger syrup. Uh, the Granada Mojito, the fruit margaritas, of course, Sangria, and the Clybourne's Peach Old Fashioned. Right. So the one I really am interested in, the house-made ginger syrup. So how exactly do you make that? Uh, fresh ginger. Uh -huh. So it's a, uh, it's a whole lot of fresh ginger. Okay. And basically, we uh, slice it down on a mandolin. Okay. Um, we peel it, slice it on a mandolin. Uh, a whole bunch goes into a pot, some sugar, water, uh -huh. and then you'll cook it and awesome. you cook it down and then you strain out the ginger and then those ginger chips are like candy ginger oh. so we actually dry those and dehydrate them right and then we use them as a garnish in our oaxacan buck which is a ginger and mezcal drink oh um, gosh, so so, good. so that is the uh the the process behind making the fresh ginger syrup okay the peach old fashioned mm -hmm what's that all about that just sounds unreal i mean it sounds like a summer drink yeah it's a, it's our signature drink from Clybourne. so the tohona which is the signature drink from tohona is right. on Clybourne's menu it's on emery's menu right. we serve it in our restaurants right. so the Clybourne peach old fashioned which is the signature drink at Clybourne's, uh we serve on the menus in the other restaurants as well so uh it is a uh, cooper's craft which is a bourbon made by woodford uh -huh. um and it's a, an an homage to their coopers or their barrel makers okay um, which is what a cooper is yeah. um, and uh so we use cooper's craft bourbon and then we use a little bit of peach puree a little bit of the fresh ginger syrup okay and then a, a luxardo cherry and we use so instead of orange we use peach so it is a traditional manhattan it is not it tastes like bourbon it's not oh, something man. to be used you know if you're lightly. not a bourbon drinker <laughs> and you think it's going to be this really sweet bourbon drink it's right. not no. it's it's just got a hint of peach a hint of ginger right. with the bourbon as a very traditional old fashioned that just sounds delicious i've never heard of a peach old fashioned yeah, it just very sounds good. great um and lastly of course you're going to carry beer one of my big questions is you know a lot of the places started out carrying like domestic beers like your good old just normal beers you get from the store 
Do you think eventually you'll be carrying any local beer? Reason I ask, we have a lot of breweries around. Sure. We have four taps here, okay. so we will have four taps that will all be local craft beers, oh, and they'll rotate out okay. pretty consistently. I love that. Um, but then we carry a very large selection of Mexican beers as right, well. Right, right. So we'll have uh, a, a large offering of Mexican beers, both in bottles and cans. Okay. And when we do happy hour, our, all of our Mexican beers are $2. Yeah, hit on that happy so. hour because I, I know it's huge. I was looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I saw some of your signature cocktails sound amazing. Yes. Talk about the happy hour. Yeah, so the, the happy hour is uh, all drink discounts because okay. our, our food, chips and salsa, guacamoles, queso, they're all very affordable right. to begin with. Right. So we don't really discount those right. down. Um, so we discount the drinks. So the signature cocktails are all $9.00. Um, the glasses of wine, we have six glasses of wine that are available for $5. All of our Mexican beers are $2. Um, so it's a, uh, you know, That's so awesome. it, it gives you a nice, nice discount on, right. on your alcoholic selections. And then it runs from four to six. Is that going to be the same? Correct. As, okay. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Scott, is there anything else you want to tell us about this, about this concept, about what you have going on? I mean, right now you guys can see there's construction going on, but July 13th, it's going to happen. So what's the story behind the aesthetics what sure. the way it looks i mean it's very obviously industrial i mean it, it looks well, pretty cool yeah what what we did um we we did not want to create a traditional taqueria i.e you know lots of bright colors and mariachi music right. and you know pine and you know that that very traditional uh taqueria look and feel um, so we went with a more California fresh, um, Southern California. Right. Um, there is a vegan restaurant out in Los Angeles. That's one of my wife's and my favorites to go to. Love to hear that. Um, and uh, we were really inspired by their design. Um, so light colors, lots of cedar, wood, yes. you know. Yes. Um, and uh, contemporary music, you right. know, with uh, some, you know, contemporary Latin music in influence in it. Um, so that was really the design. So you're, you're missing all the color in here right now in construction, but, we'll but yeah. all of those chairs, which you can see over here, right. um, those were all handmade in Mexico, oh my um, gosh. out of pine and painted. So they, there are six different colors of chairs. So right. there'll be a big pop of color here in the center. How special is that? Um, and then, uh, we, we still have a lot of painting to do, um, to fill in some color pops all over. And then all of the booze and the top of our entryway here um, are all live plants. Oh my gosh. So wow. there'll be a live plant wall that goes around the whole window there. Beautiful. Around the whole other side here and then all across the top and there'll be live plant walls in both uh, sides of the bar as well. That is so cool. So there'll be a lot of very fresh, you know, the, the whole idea is, you know, fresh tacos, right. fresh environment, you know, just very, you know, for lack of a better term, California Fresh is yeah. what, what we went after. We had um, a, a really extensive research into taquerias when yeah, we were trying to decide on this concept originally. And uh, we just really felt that that California Fresh was something that nobody in town was doing. No, they're not. Yeah. In the open concept, of course, I mean, I feel like that just it sends a welcoming message, you know, you, just the window, you know, you're, you're looking and you're going to have the bar here with seats. You can yeah, well, see this, back in. I mean, this is actually where all the food gets made. That is so cool. So you can sit right here and watch them make all the food. The bar is inside of the room back here. Right. Um, so, and then the window goes back to the back kitchen where they're prepping everything to right. bring up to the, uh, the line as they're assembling the tacos. Now, um, I was told, so in here, seats 100 plus right Correct. and then you're gonna have a patio out front that seats is 32. it 32 yep. that's awesome no I, I don't know a whole lot of people that have a restaurant like this that have a front patio so was that an was that a thought to begin with or that was something you added on or sure i mean that that was you know the the original tohona and blue ash has uh, 82 seats on its patio oh, wow. so it has a huge patio right. very small inside 45 right. seats inside wow so when we were talking about this becoming a, a Tahona, which is what we felt was the best concept and what we were excited for Loveland to, to be able to enjoy, uh, we talked to the landlord and said, hey, we really need a nice size patio space. Right. So we poured all this concrete out here to create this 
elevated patio. And it's looking over. I mean, that's pretty cool yeah. looking over. You can kind of be creepy see, while you're eating. See the bike trail. <laughs> right, you can see right. everything. So see the cool it's, Pappies people or yep. Cindy's people over there. Absolutely. That's so cool. Now, um, Scott, is there anything else that you want to share with the community or say to the community before we sign off and get ready for the big grand opening? Well, we're, we've been excited to open this. It was originally, the original open date of this restaurant was June of 2020. Dang. So COVID obviously threw a, a big wrench into that. So we, we've been waiting to open this for a very long time. So we're excited that we're finally here and we're excited to be a part of the Loveland community. And obviously we're excited too. So everyone, July 13th, that is the date. Tahona in downtown Loveland, right next to Rodeo Italian, right across the street from Cindy's. Please come down and support the community. Obviously you're a community guy. We love to support that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Scott, for having us here today. Thank and you. hopefully y'all be getting some tacos soon. See you later, Loveland. Yeah, we're cooking with gas. Yeah, we are.